basically we started out the day on the beach with like Bruce Irons and Danny Fuller and Dave Warshower, our filmer, and Hank Photo and Reef McIntosh, Mark Healy, all the boys, you know, we were all there psyching to surf, you know, Chopu. We've been there for 10 days of just perfect waves. I mean, like the best waves you can think of. And Raymana was our was our liaison, he was taking us and just, we had the best time and everything was like the best trip ever to Tahiti. And we had a place right on the beach in front of Chopu at Kalani Mark's house. And I mean, it was like, it just doesn't get any better. And it, like life at, up until that point was just top notch. You know, it was like the food was good. The people were good. The waves were good. The accommodations were perfect. I mean, air conditioning on the beach at Chopu, I mean, you just can't beat it, you know? And we had a boat, man, it was like, we were driving the boat out ourselves and we were just, we were really, really loving our situation. And we woke up that morning and all the boys were hanging out and it was like Surf Camp Central, you know, it became the Quicksilver house and everybody was hanging out there. Tory Barron, Jamie Sterling, all the boys were coming over to hang out because it was like, it was the spot. And um, we, were getting, we got up a little lazy that morning because it was slow, you know? We'd been surfing so much, we were tired. And uh, Bruce and his girlfriend came over and the waves were perfect and we said, let's do it. You know, we all, we all said, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. We all jumped in the water, got in the boat and went outside and uh, you know, we realized it was perfect, you know, three to four feet and just like perfect little chokes with some five foot sets. And we started surfing, we got in the groove and the next thing you know, the waves started getting bigger. And, you know, it came up kind of slowly at first and it was like a couple six foot sets and Kaino McGee and all the boys, all, I mean, there was, everybody was out there just having a good time. And uh, the next thing you knew, it started coming on. And people went in one by one, you know, and I think, uh, at the end of this, at the end of the, like when we really knew it was coming on, it was like Tamayo Perry, Kevin Johnson from T80, um, Malik was out there, uh, Bruce, myself, Reef McIntosh, Danny Fuller. The last heavy wave that was riven, was really ridden, that was like you know in the surf session was Danny Fuller. I mean, he he turned around like 20 yards inside of everybody and paddled for this wave. I guess he saw. The, he saw it before any of us did, but we all thought we were on it. Me and Bruce and Reef and everybody were on the lip, and there was Danny, like, way down underneath us. And we thought, what's he doing? And it turns out he was the only guy underneath it because it doubled up so hard. He dropped in free fall. I thought he was going down. And he pulled it, got just the sickest barrel, spit out, poof, came out. Everybody on the boats went crazy. And we were like, damn, Danny just got the wave of the day. And basically... When a guy gets the wave with Dead Chopu and, you know, the lineup is stacked the way it was with Tamayo and, you know, Bruce and all the guys that are, you know, there to surf that contest and just go nuts and just, you know, prove themselves, that's pretty heavy. And uh, we thought that was going to be the wave of the day and little did we know it was going to be, you know, 25, 20, 25 feet that night. And, you know, we all stayed out and surfed and Poto and, and uh, Nicola were out there doing tow-ins when it got big because it was a solid 10 to 12 feet already. And, um, you know, Tamayo got a really sick one he paddled into, and that was probably the best way of ridden at the very last end of the paddling, so we all went in. And I didn't want to watch anymore because I wasn't getting towed in, and I was really tired. We got there for like four hours surfing, just like beat, you know, you know, make a couple waves, you get hammered, and you're tired. I mean, you get tossed on a six-footer out there, man. You were getting drilled into the lagoon all the way around, coming back out. So I was tired. I went in and kicked it on the beach, and... Basically, I was cruising and it was like about two o'clock in the afternoon and I was noticing the water was like, you know, waves were coming up into the yard and I was like, damn, it must be big out there because it's like a mile out to the surf. You can't really exactly see what's going on. And so me and Bruce and his girlfriend were just hanging out under the, like the Palapa right on the beach, just watching the waves, relaxing, feeling the breeze, enjoying Tahiti. And then um, out of the blue, um, Manoa Drole just came up on his jet ski and... Uh, you know, it was obvious he was coming in to get one of us, and Bruce grabbed the, uh, the life vest. He's like, I'm ready to go, man, let's go. And, and he's like, you wanna go, but Strider. Cause I guess, you know, Bruce, I don't think he's been on the ski much. So he wanted, Manoa wanted somebody who could tow him into some ways too. So I ended up going out first. And Bruce came out and a little after. So me and uh, Manoa got on the jet ski, went down, you know, got the boogie board, tied it on. And, uh, got the other life vests and you know got the boards and we, we went out and when we got out there 
you know, we watched a couple waves. Manoa wanted to see a couple waves before he jumped in, so I threw my board into a into um, another boat, and um, we watched a couple waves. And we didn't. We thought they were the bigger ones, and we didn't know. You know, they were like 15 feet. I mean, those waves were big, dude. Like a 15 foot wave is. I mean, that's big, and that chopu, that's like retarded big. It's like 30 foot of just lip, and uh, we ended up going and getting into the surf you know we got in the lineup and I was driving the boat and he was you know feeling on his board he's like yeah I'm ready let's go and so I ended up you know I towed him into some waves that were you know gigantic I mean they were 15 solid 18 foot waves and he's so little and just standing in the pit and just poof they were spitting out the back and it was like Jesus that was heavy you know and he came out and he had this look on his face like and I hadn't really seen before, and I was like, damn, you know, it feels big and it looks big, but you can't really tell unless you sit there and you watch the waves, which is what I never did. And I got like three or four waves with him, and then he was done. And he's like, you want to go? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we get outside, you know, I, he towed me into my first wave, and I couldn't believe the power that I felt under my board, the way the wave was. I mean, it was like, it was like nothing I've ever felt before. I mean, the wave turned on me and just like I was in the bowl and I'm looking out at it and I'm like oh my god am I even gonna make it it spit it spit so hard that I flew into the face of the wave luckily landed on my back did back spins out over the shoulder and onto the channel and my board popped over after me with the spit and I was just like sitting there like oh my god and I got on the back of the the jet ski and I saw some footage of my face and my whole face is totally pale white like, I'm as white as a ghost, and I'm just like, oh my God, you know? And we go back outside, and the, the clouds came over, basically. It got overcast. And I don't know if you can imagine in your head what 20-foot chopu looks like when it's got a luminous, dark overcast to it, but it's scary. It looks gnarly. It's like, I mean, it's just, it's terrifying. And like, Poto and Nicola were catching a lot of waves. You know, and they were screaming and yelling, and the boats were screaming and yelling. And, you know, you're kind of getting anxious because you want one, but you're like in the dark. It's dark out. It's like overcast. It's kind of rainy. And it kind of cleared up, but it was still the overcast. It wasn't raining anymore, but it was overcast. And it was kind of like the waves almost had a purple tint to them. And me and Manoa were just making small talk because you start thinking about what you're doing, and you just, you know, you could just buckle. And uh, this one set came through that we didn't go for, and Nicola got it. It was a macker. And the backwash that came out was literally like, no joke, like three, four foot back. I mean, like an eight foot face wave rolled back out at us from the implosion of this wave. And I was like, wow, an eight foot face wave just rolled back out at us from the implosion of that wave. That means that wave exploded back up and out. And the explosion was so heavy that a wave that big had come out to me where I was sitting on the outside waiting for the sets. And at that point, I realized like, you know, we're really, really talking of some life and death shit here. This ain't no joke. And about 10 minutes later, you know, you, you don't really see the waves coming. You just get over one and then bam, there it is. And, you know, I saw this one like medium set wave come through. It's probably like a, you know, 18, 20 foot wave. I mean, it was a huge one. And like, I saw it and I was like, no, nah, that's not the one, you know. And then we came over and we saw this wall and the wall stretched all the way down past the channel. And I was like, this is the one, you know? And I was like, Manoa didn't even ask me. He just, Vroom! and I was like, yeah, obviously this is it, you know? And I got up and within 10 seconds, I was on the top of the wave, getting ready to go over the ledge and drop it in the wave. You got about three seconds. It's like a yes or a no. And one, two, three, I said, yes, let go of the rope. and. You know, I took the draw down into the bowl and I drew down into the bowl. And as I got to the bottom, I was going to fade. And I looked up and out of the corner of my eye, I saw, you know, the whole face of the wave. And it looked perfect and it looked like it was going to run into the channel. And then on the very inside, there was another wave basically coming at me. And what I can think of is that the wave drew so much water off the reef that on the inside bowl at Chopu, there's a piece of reef that actually makes that inside bowl turn and that's what you see those guys in those big sick pictures where you're they're coming out of the barrel that bowl the the reef raises up so if you go underwater and you look at it you can see that piece of reef raised up well there was so much water drawn off the reef 
coming into that wave that that almost totally exposed itself because the boils inside were like showing i could almost see the reef through the water and the wave kind of did like you know when a wave hits dry reef it does that boiling thing well this wave came in and basically almost boiled and a lip came out of it and as i was coming into the bowl to do my fade i saw that so i checked myself turned back into the face and decided that you know hey, maybe I shouldn't try and be that deep on this wave. And you know, if I would have looked behind me, I probably would have had a fucking heart attack because after seeing what the photos and the video looked like, I mean, it was like, it was retarded what was going on behind me. And um, now that I think about it, I guess I could have been deeper because I didn't make the wave anyway, but maybe if I was deeper, I would have died because I almost did die. So let's just say that all things happen for a reason. I saw the lip coming out of the wave way down there in the corner where it wasn't supposed to be. I just tried to keep my line and basically the wave was sucking off the reef so hard that I was going backwards. And I remember thinking to myself, I can't believe that my board is still going straight. You know, I'm still moving. And I went over a series of ledges at the bottom of the wave where my board like dropped and dropped and dropped. And then I was in that last bowl. That wave actually started to tube at me. Like it was just the weirdest sensation. Like the wave was catching up behind me and I was about to go through a tube in front of me and the tube in front of me was small, you know, it was like, I mean, you know, it, was, it wasn't small. I mean, it was, you know, a 20 foot face way down on the corner, but behind me was, you know, 40, 50 foot face and the face in front of me was 20, but the rest was all lip. So it was like a 20 foot barrel with a, you know, like a 20 foot lip and I had to go through it and it was my only thing to do because I couldn't fly over the back. So I just, you know, I took the only line I knew I could take and I went through the barrel. And as I was in the tube, it was tubing and I was in it and it was like sucking me up and it released. And at that moment of release, I figured, oh yes, yes, I'm gonna make it. You know, I was like, this is life or death shit. I'm coming out, I'm freaked out, man, let's do this. Please, mom, you know, my wife, everything. It's just like, let's do this. And I, the last thing I remember seeing was the, was the scaffolding which if you sit in a lineup, it's like back over there behind you. It's like, I, I shouldn't have been looking at the scaffolding. I should be looking at the boats. The boats should be in front of me, not the scaffolding. So basically I had done a U-turn in the barrel. I'm looking in the tube. It turned all the way around while I was in the tube. The last thing I saw was the scaffolding and Raymana and Jamie Sterling, he had just picked him up and were running away from my wave. The wave spit. And as it spit, I was like, the force of the spit had literally like picked me up and I was just airborne flying through the tube. And I remember this just craziest sensation of just like, I remember being spit on at Pipeline, it was the heaviest spit ever and just, I remember it trying to knock me off my board and if I wouldn't have had straps, I would have gone flying off my board. And I remember being like almost mid air and like just skipping on the water and it spit and I just boom! And all of a sudden it started to clear and I thought, this is it, I'm coming out. And right as I was coming out, you know, thinking I'm coming out, I'm gonna, the Hanano claim, it was like, you know, I was just feeling it. I hadn't seen it yet, but I was like, that's basically what you do. I saw the wave closing out and the lift was coming down and I saw the foam ball of the right on it, you know, and that's on dry reef. And I just, you know, there's no time to think. You just kind of look at it like, what the fuck? And bam, I hit fucking a brick wall, man. I have never hit anything that hard in my life. And my neck was tweaked for like two weeks, three weeks. I mean, it was just like my whole body on the right side went numb. I woke up, I couldn't feel nothing for a couple nights. And it was just like, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but I, I got hit really hard and I never shut my eyes. It was the weirdest sensation. I always shut my eyes, but then I opened them and my eyes were open. It was black, man. It was black the whole fucking time. And I was, I was, going with it I want to say I was scared but I was had so much adrenaline that I was like I was just taking it you know it was kind of like one of those things where man you just go with it because you you ever doubt yourself man you're gonna die I mean no matter what no matter what situation you're in if you're in a life or death situation and you doubt yourself it's just it's just a it's a bad thing to do you know you want to be positive you want to stay in the moment you want to roll with it and I did it man and the best comparison I can say is like a nice fresh block of cheese onto a cheese grater, man. It was just like, 
and I hit the reef so many times that I just felt skin just coming off my skin and like just like you know I felt chunks coming out of my arm and my knees and my my hip and my back and my ass I had like scabbed like I was bleeding everywhere man and I was underwater just you know luckily I had a life vest on I think that's what separated me from just sticking on the reef and just grinding you know half my body off because I was like in between the, the turbulence and the reef just hitting off of it but then lifting up and then hitting off of it and lifting up and then you know the next thing I knew I go I was like okay I've been over underwater a long time now there's definitely you know I've been two or three hundred yards underwater right now there's no there's you know no doubt in my mind that I've been going that fast underwater and the next thing that hit my mind was okay there's another wave behind this wave you know like there's going to be another one and my biggest fear was to not come up before that wave because you know we all we have a, a lung capacity only you know to be so much and in a situation like that you're definitely you know using air oxygen your heart's beating fast and uh, I guess I kept it mellow enough but I came up as I saw the lights you know the bubbles got lighter and then the next thing you knew I was close to the top and started, started swimming for it and um, I actually uh, I got to the top and I saw the light and I popped up and got my breath as quick as I could because I wanted it so bad and I was looking at the scaffolding and I had to turn around and that moment that nanosecond was just an eternity and I turned around and you know there it was you know it was like a 12 foot back white water closeout on my head and I was standing in waist deep water and it was breaking you know 20 yards away from me and it was like if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die right now. Because I had a, an, I had like two seconds to think about it. And I just turned around and faced the beach and just kind of put my head down and took it. And, you know, got annihilated. I got fucking annihilated again and just was all over the reef and just getting smashed. I mean, literally, there was pieces of reef sticking out of the water around me. I was looking at reef. And I turn around and, you know, I just have to turn my back. And I just took it, it went over my back and I just went for another ride. And the next thing you knew, I was basically just getting blasted again in the blackness, man. And at this point, you know, I had given up basically because there's nothing I could have done. And I was so calm and I was okay with everything that had happened so far that if I was gonna go, it was gonna happen right now. and. You know, my hands are up. So I surrendered and I came up way on the inside, man. Like way on the inside by the green pole. And I looked over and the scaffolding was right there. And I thought it was over. You know, I thought that was it. And I started to get sucked backwards. And I was still going towards the beach. And I thought I was already in the lagoon because the water was really calm, but it was still moving. And all of a sudden I hear this and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And I thought maybe it was Manoa coming on the jet ski. And I turned around and the reef, the water was sucking off the reef and the reef had like a four foot drop on into the lagoon. And I just went, hit a piece of reef and there, I, I hit the reef uh, on my back and dropped like four feet, wham, right onto my back and my ass again and ripped my shorts off my ass. And right there I was like, if that ain't it, I am dead. And I, cause I couldn't even move. I mean, like the only reason my head was above the water was cause I had a life vest on. And um, uh, that's when Manoa came on the jet ski, man. And he just pulled up and he had his head down and he just, he reached out and I lifted my arm up and he swung me onto the jet ski and fucking, I just laid on the back and we just drifted for a while. And he's like, fuck man, you wanna go back out? And I was like, you know, just devastated. Like I just looked at him and he knew. And he took me in. And we were, you know, I was staying on the beach right there. And by the time I got to the beach, I composed myself to, to stand on my own two feet. And at that moment I felt like, you know, <laughs> I was, you know, obviously I was gonna be okay. And I was standing on my own two feet and I was just like ecstatic. And Van Lennep came running down on the beach and started taking pictures of me. And then like two seconds later, all my cuts just opened up. They went from white to red, my whole body just started bleeding. 
And I just stood there with my board and bled and just tripped out. And then fucking, I went up on the beach and Mark Kalani was there, the guy whose house it is, and Moana, the guy who works on it in the camp with him, and, and uh, Bruce's girlfriend, Mia, got some limes, cut them all up, and all at once they just scrubbed my body with limes and all my cuts to kill the infection. And I almost threw up from like getting all the pain, you know, they'd get the rush, and I just fucking stood there and just, you know, I just took it. And meanwhile, everybody outside, like, was trying to figure out what they were going to tell my wife because I thought I died. Bruce and Danny Fuller, that, that was the first thing that came into their mind. They said, they said, fuck, what are we going to tell his wife? But fortunately, I got to tell her myself. I'm happy to be alive. And pushing it that far is... It's good for the sport, but it's it's pretty fucking emotional. And uh, you know who knows, man? It might happen again, and I'll be there. Because basically, surfing's put me on the map. It's given me everything I've got in my life, from my houses to my cars. And my path has been dictated by Mother Nature and the ocean, so. I'm gonna stick with it forever and basically it's giving me life so if it takes me out, it takes me out. And that's it.